Hey everyone, welcome to Princess Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with episode 7 of Dr. Stone. Uh, so last time we did a double reaction, I wasn't necessarily planning on that, but it worked out. Um, just really fit with the episodes that we were getting at. So Senku was revived from a near-death state due to the ancient art of pre-planning. And basically just giving his friends some subtle clues as to what was going on. They managed to understand and they did revive him. Unbeknownst to Sukasa, who himself ended up coming across the mysterious other person in the forest. This blonde girl. I don't remember her name right now. I, it, it was like mentioned I think once in the last episode and uh i just don't remember it yet but yeah he came across her dropped a tree trunk on her because she was attacking him because she saw what he had done and clearly she has some morals um after senku's arrival he ends up coming across her and he saves her and she ends up seemingly falling for him um but it's made clear through these interactions that she seems to be like an inhabitant of this world not um someone who was awakened but rather someone born into this world after gener some some amount of generations of people being awakened um and it kind of makes sense it, to a degree that Senku wasn't the first one to awaken. I actually really like that detail. Um, because it's like, yeah, Senku's really smart and was able to keep track of the time and everything. Keep track of the days, the amount of, like, seconds that have passed. Um, and that's all well and good, but he came out at a very calculated point. And there's also the aspect of, like, could he have come out sooner? It's kind of unclear. He maybe could have come out a little bit sooner, but I, I don't think he could have, like, come out years and years uh, earlier. I, I think that he was starting to be able to come out because of, you know, the drippings and everything around that time. And he chose somehow, like, by power of will to not come out until specifically the springtime. So he wait he waited until specifically spring to fully come out or something. Um, but maybe it just worked out that way. Maybe he didn't even have the choice because we know that like the bat droppings were getting on him and everything and it was all working out that way. So maybe it just worked out and maybe his will didn't really have any say in the matter. <laughs> Um, but that also means that sometime in the past, we, we don't know exactly how far into the past, but at some point, uh, other people woke up. They came out of the, uh, out of the stasis, the stone state, and started surviving and eventually having children and stuff. Now... There might not be, a, like, a lot of these people. In fact, there probably aren't. But, there are still some. Um, I could see, like, like, this girl has to be part of, a, like, a village at least, right? It's not, like, just, like, two or three people. If she's, like, a multi-generational person... Um, living here and everything, having just, uh, ha having been, like, for multiple generations now, been living in this stone world, then 100%, uh, there's got to be at least a village. It, 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 again, not a lot of people, um, but enough. Now... I'm wondering if they have any knowledge of how to 
free the people encased in stone. Um, I wonder if there's anything to that or if they just have no clue how. It's unknown at this point, really. But that's an interesting question to take into account. If, if we end up going back with her to her village, we could find out a lot and possibly, like, really get things going with this uh, kingdom of science in the stone world. But I don't know exactly where this is going to go right now. Meanwhile, uh, our other two knuckleheads are going to be playing spy and getting an inside look at the enemy camp. Um... They're going to find Sukasa, basically going to beg him to let them join him, just to keep tabs on him and stuff. Um, this is a very risky maneuver, and they acknowledge that. But it's something that they're willing to do. I wonder how long this is going to go for, this ruse. I, I, can't, I, can't, I feel like I can't see it going past season one. I don't feel like this is going to last long because Tsukasa is way too smart. The dude is very smart. We've seen that time and time again and he's not going to just not figure it out. He's definitely going to figure it out. The question is how quickly? Like what if he just figures it out right away? Like, just by the way they're talking, he, he'll be able to tell that Senku's alive. It's like, I would honestly not put it past him. Um, but I don't know. I just, I just don't know. Um, there's still plenty of characters we have in the opening. I'm wondering if some of them uh, are from the same village, maybe, as this girl. I mean, possibly. So, I'm just, I'm just interested to see what we got in store here. So we're gonna check it out and see what this episode gives us. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, then fades back in, everything for that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in three, two, one, now. So yeah, it's actually a pretty good kind of test to, to see who has a certain moral uh, compassion to them in this stone world. Simply telling them the history of everything that had happened and how this entire stone world came to be and seeing their reaction to it, how they think, what they think about it and everything. Because we see here Chrome, like, starts crying. Like, not the reaction Senku expected, but his, his response, Chrome's response is that whoever, whatever, took all of this away is terrible. Because... Our, the predecessors, the, the humans from the past, spent so much time building up to that, that to take that all away like that is wrong. To, you know, take these people's lives away. Everything that they've worked for, everything that they are, is wrong. And it shows that he has a certain moral compass to him that allows him to care about people. And we've already kind of seen that a bit with uh, him wanting to save Ruri. But he definitely, I mean, outside of that, is just genuinely good. He's a bit of a doofus, um, seeing science as sorcery and all and using these silly little tricks but the fact that he learned all of this on his own just by literally experimenting that's science that's literally the cornerstone of what science is built upon 
so yeah the fact that he and senku are getting along and are obviously going to be best friends just makes sense i kind of feel bad for taiju at the same time because it's like taiju and senku were best friends and they're still obviously going to be like super close and everything that's not changing but yeah it's 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 cool to see that senku is finding someone maybe not as smart as him and everything but given the circumstances wouldn't be but someone who is still very scientifically minded who is an invaluable ally having more than one person who knows about all of this is extremely useful because up until this point like senku was alone in that he he had friends who had other uses he who had other um inputs to give to this new society but there was not really anyone like him neither taiju or yuzuriha or even if you want to count sukasa none of them were um scientifically minded um sukasa is probably the closest because of his in intellect but he's not really scientifically minded in the same way. He's just smart from a, from a standard perspective. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really interesting. And, and we get to meet Ruri as well, the older sister of Kohaku, who <laughs> is also in the opening. And I didn't realize, because I thought like the one with the hair down and everything, I thought that was just Kohaku again with her hair down. I, I, I did not realize that was a different person. They look so much alike, and obviously they're sisters, so it's intentional. But it's like, I genuinely just thought that was Kohaku again. <laughs> uh, but no, that's her older sister who is sick uh, and is also apparently the priestess of the village. I don't think that means she's in charge. There's probably a chief, I would say. But she's definitely, like, very high up. She has an exceptionally important role to play and, you know, creating this antibiotic to help her is going to be exceptionally important. And it's it's probably what's going to help win Senku over with the village. Saving Ruri is a big deal, clearly. We also meet these other characters, Kinro and Ginro, who are uh, the guards for the entrance to the village. Their village seems to be on like a little peninsula-like uh, landmass. And so there's only one way to get in through the narrow strip of land. So it's guarded in the meanwhile by these two. Um, Kinro, I believe, is the, the big... Uh, <laughs> their names are so goddamn similar. I believe he's the big, tough, uh, rule-abiding one. The one who gets the golden uh, spearhead. He's very, very serious, but you see a softer side to him with his response to the golden spearhead, how much he genuinely enjoys it, even if he's not going to uh, physically show it. Um, and Ginro, meanwhile, is kind of a doof. He's ridiculously silly and... Um, not very serious at all. He kind of balances out Kinro, um, but he's also very cautious and scared. Like, things that he doesn't understand freak him out, such as the bubbles. Um, so it's really, it's really interesting to see uh, just these different kinds of characters being introduced to our, like, you know, these two specifically are kind of basically polar opposites in a lot of ways. Um, and it's interesting to see them just working together pretty normally. Just, you know, they trust each other. And it's very clear that uh, that's the case. So it's pretty interesting to see. Uh, this village that we see, though, it, yeah, it's, it's pretty small, which is what I expected. Because it's like, there's no way there's like this big sprawling village of all these different huts and everything. These, like, city streets, basically, and shops and all. No, no, no. It's going to be very bare bones. It, it just it just makes sense. Um, but seeing, like, this actual village of, you know, people 
in this stone world and mind you generations um who have been living in this world n none of the people in this village i'm sure were awakened unless they unless they do have like someone there who was awakened and uh but but most of them are definitely like multi-generation from the past and all um they're, they're generations away from having been awakened and they've just been living in this world and creating their own society creating their own their own rules their own uh like what's the word i was doing well too and now i, I forget the word hierarchy that's what i'm trying to think of thinking of try, forming their own hierarchy um discovering uses for different materials and objects and stuff it's like yeah this is what humans would do just obviously and obviously the first generations that started this the ones that did wake up it's like they're gonna have to have survived in this world by acclimating to it so their knowledge of the past wasn't going to help anyway um their knowledge of just the scientific achievements and stuff it's like outside of like just knowing certain things about certain materials and stuff it's like that wasn't going to be passed on for very long maybe like one generation or two but they were going to just have to make their own way and the stuff that was going to be passed on was going to be what's going to help them survive and thrive in this world so yeah it's just everything just works here um now one thing of note is i think this is the first episode we don't see taiju in like and and not just taiju but yuzuriha and sukasa also aren't in this episode um we're following entirely senku's side of things here and, and i'm sure we're going to catch back up with the other side we're going to see what they're doing as well but I think that's a really interesting uh, perspective to follow. Um, especially considering what Taiju and Yuzuriha are doing. Going to try and, you know, join up with Tsukasa as basically spies. So, that's really fascinating. And now, we have no idea what's going on with them. We have no idea what they're up to. So until it does end up showing us that, we're in the dark on whether or not that mission's even succeeding to any degree. All we know for sure right now is that Senku is in a very good place for his kingdom of science. Like, this is, like, an exceptional find, basically. And mind you, it's thanks to Kohaku. She's the one who led him there. Um, so it's like, you got to give her the credit for that. But I'm sure Senku probably would have found it himself anyway. I mean, knowing him, <laughs> he would have probably found traces of uh, of humanity around the area and ended up discovering it. Uh, but yeah, it's like it's it's going to be interesting to see where this goes now cuz we we have the lead in with the antibiotics, so that's definitely coming up next time. Uh, yeah, this, this frames things in a much more interesting way. And like I said, I'm very excited to see where this all goes. Uh, for the time being, though, thank you all so much for tuning in. Tell me what you thought of this episode in the comments below. And for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.